Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Property Management 101, and today we'll be discussing best practices on how to finish each quarter strong. If you've not already done so, please watch my disclosure video as well as my why I do this video. And if you found this video helpful and learned something new, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. This video will apply best to any supervisor that works in the property management industry, regardless of their asset type or demographic type, that's involved with setting and enforcing and following up with your team's goals. There are a few other videos that you may find helpful that have some related topics to this video as well, and there's some crossover to them. And that's my budget preparation video and my finalized budget video. I will post both links in the video description. Number one best practice to ensure you finish each quarter strong, late move-ins. What I'm referring to as far as late move-ins is in that quarter, what can you do to add to some additional late move-ins within that quarter? The reason why this is important because many of your goals might be geared around occupancy where you finish the quarter. By allowing and finding some opportunities to ensure you have a few additional move-ins before the end of the quarter may be very important and very impactful to your goals for that particular quarter. Sometimes there's late move-outs at the end of that quarter that make it very hard to build on your occupancy because of how late they're scheduled to move out. Let me give you an example of what I'm referring to and let me give you an example of how to help this dynamic. So let's say you have a situation where someone's scheduled to move out in the last month of the quarter on the 20th of the month. Let's say your team is average turnaround time to turn a unit into moving condition is 12 days. In this example, typically this would not be possible for someone to move into this unit because of your average turnaround time and where it falls within the month. But maybe you have a situation to lower that turnaround time from 12 days to six days, and you may be able to find a resident that wants to move in and then three or four days after it's made ready. And as long as that happens, you're gonna have a move in that just secures a higher occupancy before the end of the quarter, which may help you reach your goals. And I would recommend looking at that full month to see any move-ins you have and what do you do to turn those units faster, whether it be hiring vendors, whether it be pre-walking the units before someone moves out, whether it be any other idea that you may have, maybe allocating more staff to turn units. So there's definitely a different couple ways to handling the situation. You just need to find what works best with your staff. But this is an example that works very well if you focus on, hey, how can we turn these units quicker, get them pre-lease quicker, get them to move in quicker, especially right before the end of the month. Number two best practice to ensure you finish the quarter strong you really want to focus on having a good amount of movements in the second month of that quarter. If you have traditional quarters to your portfolio or to your asset, you really want to focus on having the most amount of move-ins you can during the second month of that quarter. And this would be February, May, August, and November. The reason why this is important, if you have any goals that are related to average rents or rent rolls or things like that, then you're going to want to ensure that you have more move-ins on that second month than the third month, and let me explain why. So typically, that resident, if they're moving in mid-month, they're gonna pay a prorated amount for that month, and then the following month, they'll have their scheduled full payment that'll be due as that will be their first full month they're occupying their unit. The problem is, if you are looking or are trying to achieve a certain rent roll numbers, also known as average rents, if you have a lot of residents that month paying a prorated amount, that could bring down your average. And if you have a lot of those residents moving in the third month of the quarter and not the second month of the quarter, this could bring down your overall uh, rent averages right before the end of the quarter. So you really wanna make sure if you have any goals that are wrapped around average rents or rent roll that are gonna be for what is collected, not necessarily what is scheduled. Some companies could collect this metric differently. So that's something you wanna be aware of as well. But I've seen companies actually collect it off both, what is the actual and what is scheduled. So just different things to think about. But if this is the case where your company looks at it different ways or look at what's collected, you really wanna make sure you have the most amount of move-ins in that second month of the quarter. And the last practice to keep in mind to finish the quarter strong, is having checkpoints. What I mean by having checkpoints is you wanna make sure that at the start of each quarter 
and throughout the quarter, you're ensuring with your team where, what your status is and what you need to do to ensure you hit your goal by the end of the quarter. As much effort as you may be able to make late in the quarter to try to catch up, it sometimes may be impossible just depending on where you sit against your goal. So it's really important that you're proactive, your team knows about your goal, you explain the goal, you have checkpoints, or you add it to any meetings that are already scheduled as part of the agenda, or maybe hold a uh, individual meeting just based off, hey guys, here's where we're at, here's where we need to improve to ensure we're hitting our goal by the end of the quarter. And for your bonus tip today, this is something I alluded to a short time ago, you really wanna make sure your team is aware of your goals. And this is really important because everyone on your staff probably has something to do with almost every single goal. So ensuring they know what those goals are, you're following up where we the status of these throughout the quarter, not just at the end of the quarter, will be very important on their impact and ability to help the overall team and asset get to that goal that is set for the end of the quarter. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. And if you have any questions about this video or any of my videos, feel free to comment and I'll be happy to address them for you. Happy leasing.